I remember when Saddam went in, we then hoped that we would get a chance to go because we had no mission on the border. We dismantled our camps on the border. We were no longer a reaction force. The only thing we could look forward to were boring gunneries and boring maneuvers where there really wasn't an enemy to prepare for. So all through October, we began training very hard on all of the ranges, shot as much ammunition as we possibly could. At the same time, US tank crews in America were also training hard. Captain Eric Schwartz was among the first to try an entirely new video game-like approach to training. We did a lot of training inside of simulators that looked like a big box, a modular unit where you had all four members of the tank. So you had the driver and then you had the loader and he had his specific functions and then the gunner. So that's the first time you have the synchronization of the crew. You could go in your simulators and move on a battlefield, a virtual battlefield together. That's all I see out there. Gunner, Sabo, two tanks, left tank first. Douglas McGregor and Eric Schwartz operated the M1 Abrams tank. It was developed in the 1970s after the US and Germany tried and failed to agree on a common tank design. The M1 was a marvel of technology, built by Chrysler in the 1980s. In my mind, the M1 is the finest tank that's out there. Well, I'm biased, but it is a fine, fine tank. It's better than driving a car. It has a better braking system than your car. When you drive your car, it's just you and only you. Uh, in that tank, it's, it's four people operating as one. And I think that's what's, that's, that's probably the most beautiful part about it. The difference between the M1A1 Abrams tank and other earlier versions is almost as though you went from uh, a propeller plane, propeller driven plane to a jet aircraft. The M1 was designed at the height of the Cold War. It was to provide an advantage to US troops almost certainly outnumbered by their Soviet enemies. But by 1990, it still had never seen combat. The M1 was a large tank, outweighing the T-72 by more than 20 tons, but it had its advantages. Its cannon was equipped with a gyroscopic stabilizer that allowed it to fire with high precision, even on the move, and a night vision system able to spot enemies 800 meters away in the dark. Most importantly, it had a unique armor called Chobham. Chobham armor was developed at a place called Chobham in Surrey in England in the 1960s. And uh, if you make a ceramic layer or a grid, of uh, ceramic tiles, suspend that in a very clever mesh system, along with other layers such as gaps, rubber, steel as well. You put that together and for its weight and size, it's much more effective at stopping incoming rounds, whether they're hollow charge weapons or whether they're metal darts fired by other tanks. That has a greater stopping power for the width and the weight. Indeed, there have been no penetrations. A crew protected with Chobham armor would have been completely safe. In a tank with conventional armor, either type of attack would have killed them. One of the problems with real Chobham armor is you can't bend it, which is why most modern Western tanks have that very, very faceted look about them instead of the curve shape, because that's because underneath the skin, that's where that Chobham armor packs, as they're called, are often placed. In the fall of 1990, Douglas McGregor and the M1 crew stationed in Germany began their move. They left the green plains of Germany for Al Dubai, a port city in Saudi Arabia. It took three weeks for the entire regimental battle group to, to move because the, the tanks went from Bremerhaven on ship all the way down to the Persian Gulf. So we flew down and literally offloaded the tanks that we brought with us from Germany on the docks. For the first time in history, US tank crews would face modern Soviet tanks, but not in Cold War Europe, but instead in the middle of the Arabian desert. 
the United States led a coalition of 28 countries. Their combined forces, 2,000 tanks and 600,000 soldiers, 